Good morning. Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's about 4 degrees outside, about 38 here in the shop, so it is a black rifle coffee morning. So, today we're talking about card scrapers, specifically how to sharpen a card scraper. Before that, however, you kind of need to know what the heck these things are. All it is is about a 3 inch by 6 inch roughly uh, piece of tool steel, high speed tool steel. Um, what you do on it is you force uh, a, a burr on the edge, the long edge, and what that burr does is whenever you push it against the wood, it cuts. So you can see, you get a really nice little burr, creates a nice little curl. That's about a 3 thousandths of an inch curl. Of an inch. Um, so, easy to use, basically, the way I use it, talk about methods of work, everybody's got their own methods of work. Great thing about woodworking, there's lots of ways to do things, just because you do it one way and someone does it another way doesn't mean your way is wrong or his or her way is better. Lots of ways to solve problems in woodworking, it's one of the great things about it. So, the way I do this, two, th two thumbs at the back, two fingers at the front, Push forward slightly, create a mild curve, about 70 to 80 degree angle. I'm holding it at 45 at the moment so you can see the curls that comes off on the one side. Um, doesn't have to be, normally I do it body on and square. So you peel off a curl. Great thing about this tool is the problem solver. Every toolbox should have one or two of these things. Once you learn how to sharpen it, use it. Man, you'll be picking this thing up all the time. Um, great for popping off uh, uh, glue beads whenever you butt joint two pieces of wood together. It's great for uh, flattening out squirrely grain. If you have little chip outs. Um, as I said, these are about uh, two to three thousandths thick. So you can do the, do the math as far as how many times you have to hit it. This will uh, dish a piece of wood pretty fast. All right. Uh, the downside of this sometimes is that if you're not accustomed to using it, Need some, you do need some hand strength to do it more than a few times, um, so your wrist may get tired. But use it a little bit, you'll be good to go. You're using this, and it starts to make dust. It's not giving you curls, or it's giving you a curl here and there, a little bit of dust and curl. It's not sharp. You need to sharpen it. Super simple and fast to sharp. Perfect. Sorry. You only need a couple couple pieces. Really, all you need is a fine mill file, all right, this is a fine triangular mill file, it's actually a very crisp purpose mill file, and a burnisher. That's really all you need. Uh, a lot of guys are doing all kinds of different things, there's all kinds of tools in the market you can use, uh, I think I think Virtus or Lee Valley makes a, actually it's a pretty nice looking little tool, uh, all in one to end them, you know, integrated burnisher and blah blah blah, um, you can do all that kind of stuff. All you really need are two things. A good fine mill file and a burnisher. Take this half is really, this are, uh, you can sharpen this really fast. So you can sharpen with these two tools really fast. Let's take a look. So, first thing you're going to do. I hate to take them off because they're nice edges. So, first thing you want to do though is you want to joint the edge. Several ways to joint the edge. You can throw it in a vise, which is what I do. Um, I see guys, oh, right around here. Yeah, that's one. I see guys actually hold them like, pull them like this and join them with a file. Um, you can do that. I personally don't like that. It digs into my top of my uh, bench. It also gives me a I don't really like dealing with these sharp edges, but these, these are sharp edges, man. So I use, I use a bench, vise, lock it in. Make sure you lock it in really good because you're going to be putting some pressure on this thing. All you do is take the file, you're going to hold the file 90 degrees to the face or parallel to the edge of the face you're, you're, uh, you're filing. And when you do this, the objective is twofold. One, to get rid of it when you burnish it, you're a little crown. So you're flattening out that crown. You want the top perfectly flat. The other 
reason is you're getting rid of the work hardened material on top so that you can turn a fresh burr. Uh, once it's already work hardened, it gets pretty, pretty hard, so it's a little more difficult to try to do it just right over top of the work hardened tree. So, hit it. You can feel it catch and, catch and release and catch and release until it, you have a nice cut all the way across five to ten times. Be, as I said, be careful with these corners, you know. If I cut my, the pad of my uh, thumb here on this corner, yeah, that would hurt. It'd be bleeding. So, a few times like this, you can feel when the file finally, finally hits its stride and actually is cutting the entire link. By that time, you've gotten off all the, uh, all the work hard material and taken the crown down. So it doesn't take that much. You have to take it off. You only take it off a few thousandths of an inch. Next thing you want to do with this is you want to get rid of the burr that's left over here and anything that might have been left over by the file. So, easy way to do that, just run the file across it a few times. Again, so here's the deal about files. Never pull a file backwards. Always forward. The only cut in the forward stroke, pulling a file backwards, all that does is, is dull the little teeth. And all the file is a whole bunch of little teeth. So, hit them a couple times. And again, you can kind of feel for that ridge, that burr. One, one or two more times, very gently across the top in case you roll the burr back. And you're done. Now at this point, you'll find a lot of guys swear by using a, a stone. And they'll use a stone to, chuck, to uh, polish the edge, and they'll do all this great stuff. I'm not saying it's wrong. All I'm saying is you don't necessarily need it. I never needed it, still don't. Um, if you're going to do that, however, never run, never run, never run the edge on the face of the stone. Always run it on the side of the stone. Okay? So hit it, hit it four or five times, then you'll come to the flat. But again, I never do this, but you may want to. It kind of depends on your, on your file. If you have a crappy file, if you have a crappy file or a... Uh, not a fine mill file like this one. This is the Nicholson. Uh, and if you were to look at these, well, for every three teeth on the Nicholson, there's about five teeth here. So there's a, a little bit tighter and a lot better surface finish when you get done. So you have to look for a very fine mill file. Standard, this is standard Nicholson file, and I don't know what the count is on it. This, by the way, is another methodology you can use to joint. It's actually a little jointer one I personally made for my, my uh, saws. So all you do, a little square piece, you can see, you can see that. Made it, a notch out of it, put a potato in it, threw in a uh, little brass screw, put the file in, tighten it down. It gives me a nice square uh, registration face. I could join my, my, I could use it on this, I could, but I could join my, my saw very quickly with this, a couple of strokes across it. By the way, I wouldn't be using this one because this handle interferes. But you can make one of these things or you can buy one if you really feel the need. So, I'm just checking to make sure I get the right edge because one of them is still sharp. So, so easy, easily to do. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to burnish. So back to the file, or back to the bites, I'm sorry. First thing you're going to do is you're going to work hard, which is really what we're doing here, create this, is you're going to work hard the top, the edge. Pick your burnisher, whatever you're using, okay, this is a really nice slick Virtus burnisher, burnisher I think I picked up for 20 bucks or so, maybe 29 I don't know. I'm a tool junkie, so I have all these kind of tools. My dad was a... Uh, was a uh, cabinet maker and my grandfather a pattern maker. When they did this, you know something? They used a round screwdriver, a heavy duty round screwdriver. 
These days I probably wouldn't use them because most of the screwdrivers are not finished on the outside. Uh, unless you can find one that's uh, smooth. I wouldn't use one of the ones that are stippled or, or matte finish. Uh, what that ends up doing is basically leaves a whole crap of burrs you don't want to use it. Uh, this you can see the polished, polished carbide uh, rod. And uh, it's pretty slick. Works out really well. I actually really like this one. Uh, so, all you're going to do is hold this firm downward pressure, 90 degrees to the face, parallel to the surface. And you're going to run this back and forth probably 10 to 20 times. Good firm downward pressure. So all you're doing is starting, starting to set the, um, the work hardening on this top surface. Okay? I think Paul Sellers calls it conditioning. So, there's no, no burr yet. All we've done is flatten that out. Next thing I want to do, actually let's pull it tight. Okay, next thing you want to do here is you want to start to pull a burr over the edge. Same thing, you're holding it not quite flat, about 5 degrees, and you're going to run this back and forth 20 to 30 times. Firm downward pressure. Flip it over, you do the same thing. So what you're trying to do here is, is effectively, if you look down the edge with a microscope, you'd see a little bit of a U. Okay, so in the end, what you're going to end up with out, out of this is something that looks a bit like this. So you get that U, kind of like a, a, a hollow ground ice skate, though on a microscopic level. So we've got that done. So the next thing we want to do is drop it back in the vise. So the next thing we want to do is drop it back in the vise. Make sure it's in. Make sure it's in really tight because this is where we're putting some pressure on it. Okay, you should have been putting pretty good pressure on the other, the other uh, bases of this. This one you're going to really bear down. So first thing we're going to do. Now you have that U. I want to flatten that U out. So again, about 20 times. Maybe 30. All right, run it back. Now what I want to do is I want to do 10 times at about five degrees on both sides. All right, now I want to go to about 10 degrees or 15 degrees. Same here, 10 to 15 degrees. And what this does, this sets up a curl. So it'll be a mushroom top with a curl. And basically what you're going to get is something that looks like 
you can see this. Something like that. And this is going to be your, this is your cutting edge right here. And those are pretty, those are really small, I'll tell you what. So, pull it out. We should be able to feel the, feel the, uh, my hands are pretty cold here. Yeah, that's a pretty good burr. So you should feel a pretty good burr. Um, if you're doing this and you're not getting a good burr, it's probably because you're not putting enough downward force. So, let's give this a shot. Throw my uh, piece of uh, walnut back in here. See if it really is. Or if I'm just lying about it. Okay. Move my coffee out of the way. So you see those curls? So it started making a little bit of dust here initially because my engagement angle wasn't right. I didn't have enough uh, pressure on the, uh, on the card itself. But once I got that dialed in, you can see the beautiful curls it makes. Now these are about 2,000 to 3,000 of an inch thick. So you can see how quickly you can peel off a couple thousandths of an inch. So you can see the kind of uh, the kind of uh, curls this thing makes. It'll scrape off things like burn marks off of, off of maple. Uh, take off your your uh, saw your saw blades running a little rough. Take off saw blade marks. All those kind of things on the edge. If you get a few bunch of pieces that wood together, wood, you get those, sometimes get those little uh, squeeze outs, squeeze out bubbles. Even if it's not a squeeze out bubble, it's a line. This thing will take it off really quick. Um, if you're a few thousands off over high on one side compared to the other, again, you pick this up. You don't need a, uh, a plane. Pick up a card scraper, scrape it off, level them out. Great for, for that kind of thing. There's a ton of other things you can use these things for. Um, you can get into corners. They're not quite as effective, but you can get into corners, scrape. It's great for scraping off paint or gunk. You have, uh, sometimes I buy uh, uh, pre-cut blanks for turning at the store, and they'll usually come coated in wax. Great for taking the wax off. In a couple of minutes, I can strip the whole wax off without having to uh, mess too much, and then I can start working on it. Uh, I, hate, I hate having too much wax on it where I try to chuck it up. So, so tons of different things you can use. Set the problem solver. It should be in your toolbox. Get two of them. Sandvik is the one that I personally recommend. <clears throat> Lots of people make it. So, hey, put it in your toolbox. Learn to use it. Learn to sharpen it. And thanks for joining me today on the 30-Minute Woodshop. Good making.